All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to uh, cover and to witness our press conference. Uh, my name is Harry Kibler. I'm the founder of a grassroots organization called Rhino Hunt. It stands for Republican in name only. I'm joined with uh, some close friends with other organizations. I'll let them uh, introduce themselves. Uh, we just want to make this brief as possible, uh, answer any questions at the end. Uh, we're here today to talk about our displeasure and distrust of what's going on with the, uh, the Bill H-3066, uh, otherwise known as the Department of Administration, Reform Bill, Government Restructuring. It's got a lot of titles. <clears throat> I'm not certain that we're dealing with reform as much as we are dealing with reshuffling. It appears that we're reshuffling the deck and not true reform. We've heard comments made from elected leaders, numerous elected leaders, that what was passed in the House went to the Senate and now is back in the House is historic reform in South Carolina. The analysis that we have uh, looked at doesn't quite show historic reform. The closest that it comes is historical in the fact that history is replete with elected folks having power and wanting to maintain that power. Historical, no. Or history, yeah, historical, no. It's not. I'd like to draw attention to the fact that most of our leaders that occupy the State House have been here for 20 plus years. The idea of government reform did not start with the legislature. The legislature is the, the very body that created the system that we've got, and they would be quite content to leave it alone. The idea of reform started when the people of South Carolina started waking up to what is happening in these halls in this sacred building. We've got Senate uh, leadership that's been here for 31 years. We've got House leadership that's been here for 19 years. If reform was a top priority, you would think it would have happened at least 10 or 12, 15, 20 years, maybe even 30 years ago. Reform did not start with the legislature or with our governor. It started with the people. <clears throat> They've created for themselves a system of secrecy and concentration of power for themselves, and they continue to fight like hell to maintain that power. We've been, a lot of us have been contacted by legislators, other government uh, staff, telling us all sorts of things, that what you're asking for is too expensive. It would be too time consuming. And last but not least, it was unconstitutional. What we're asking for is unconstitutional. This is the same thing that we heard about roll call voting. <clears throat> when I was personally contacted by one of the leaders in the Senate saying that it would cost over $100,000 to implement roll call voting. And that was the big excuse, it's too expensive. When I replied, who do we write out a check to? I'll have you a check for $100,000 in 24 hours. The excuse went to, well, it'll take too much time. If you haven't looked into it, 50% of the legislation, if that's what you want to call it, that's introduced in, this, in these chambers are resolutions to congratulate a high school volleyball team for winning the championship. I think if we did a little less congratulating and a little bit more of the people's business, there'd be plenty of time to take care of the people's business. And then, of course, the last thing we heard about roll call voting is it's unconstitutional, which is right where we're at today, because that's what the message that I got last night uh, from Curtis Loftus is that what we're asking for is unconstitutional. I challenged him last night, and I challenge each of you here today Find me in this building, our state capitol, find me a copy of the South Carolina State Constitution. Folks, it's not in this building. There's not a copy to be found, because I tried to find it here. I was told that if I wanted to see it, I'd have to go to the museum. I challenge each one of our state representatives, our state senators, and our governor to find a copy of it and read it 
before they tell us that what we're asking for is unconstitutional. How did all this get started? The people of South Carolina, the grassroots folks, organizations such as mine and these folks here, they're standing with me. As we started to understand more and more about the concentrated power that resides in just a few people, we said this is not good government. We know the principle of good government is disbursement of power, separation of power. We know the principle of good government is uh, not secrecy, but openness, transparency. And we know that the, the, the promise of good government comes in accountability. What the House originally passed and sent to the Senate contained none of those things. What the Senate has passed and now sent back to the House still contains very little of those things. And they want to call it historic. It's not historic. It's rearranging the deck chairs while South Carolina's ship continues to take on more water. In the other battles that we have faced trying to get better government in South Carolina, we were used to hearing from our legislators. Well, the other side, my constituents with different opinions, they want us to do something different. We're used to that, and we understand people have differing opinions. So we wanted to know what constituency is leaning pressure on our legislators to keep things the way they are and to maintain the power structure that is in existence right now. So we set out on a course issuing FOIA requests, Freedom of Information requests, to all of the legislators and the governor to tell us who is standing opposed to real reform in South Carolina. We quickly became aware that the legislature has exempted itself from fulfilling such FOIA requirements. I find it interesting that if we want to go hunting, we have to tell the government who we are, what we're going to do. If we actually shoot something, we have to turn in and tell them what we've shot. If we want to build an addition to our house, we've got to give accountability to government. If we want to put a new septic system in, we've got to give accountability to government. But the legislature has exempted itself from being accountable to the people that they represent. What we have been able to uncover is that not one constituent of any representative or any senator said, keep it the way it is. Maintain your power hold. The closest thing that we found is a letter that was sent to, uh, given to each senator from our governor that appears to be working against the very reform that we're asking for. Freedom is not complicated. It gets complicated when politicians get in there and, and, and insert things that complicate the whole situation. What we're asking for is very simple. We want true separation of power. We want to know who is responsible, not an overlap of power, not where power is shared between the legislative branch and the executive branch. We want accountability and transparency. I've had legislators contact me and, and request Give us the, the language of an amendment that you want to get this done. Folks, that's why we hire them. We should not have to write the legislation. We know what government, good government looks like. We've made those requests known. Give us the, the good government that we deserve and that we pay for. And we've been told that, well, we'll get 90% of what we'll want it. Be satisfied with that. We'll come back and fight for more at a later time. We hear this all the time when we request good legislation for better government. We heard it with the illegal immigration bill. They said it was the toughest law on illegal immigration in the nation. The 10% that they didn't tell us was they didn't actually fund it to enforce it. So today when we stand here and we're being told by uh, legislator after legislator, it's, it, you're getting 90% of what, what you're asking for. Not one of them has been able to tell us what that 90% is and what the 10% is that we're not getting. Never again will we allow our elected officials to tell us when the job is done or when the job is done good enough. 
will not settle for half-hearted measures and campaign talking points. We will insist on the government that we deserve and that we pay for. And on a final note, never again will we hold legislators accountable for the process. We will hold them accountable for the product that they produce. And the end product will show us if they really want reform or if they are reformers in name only. Never have I seen people so excited about their government and elected officials so scared. It's a beautiful thing and it needs to stay that way. Thank you. Harry said just about everything that needs to be said. I'm Talbert Black. I am the state coordinator for Campaign for Liberty, also the founder of a, a small organization called uh, Palmetto Liberty, whose sole purpose is to replace these legislators and uh, possibly the governor when they don't do what needs to be done. Um, you know, in mentioning the governor, let me just say one thing. I was one of her largest supporters when she was running for governor. And I have to tell you that I am probably one of the most disappointed people that there is in this state with the result that she's given so far. Particularly so in the fight for this bill. Report after report after report from legislators and the evidence that she's given herself, such as the letter that Harry mentioned, has shown that she has fought against what the people have asked for with this Department of Administration bill. She made deals with legislative leadership to not even get rid of the Budget Control Board initially last year because, her staff told me, she thought that they couldn't get it. But when the people stood up and demanded it, it was a unanimous vote in the Senate for what we wanted. So as Harry said, we will not accept what our elected officials tell us can be done. We know what good government looks like, and that's what we demand. I second everything that Harry said, and um, we're not in it for compromise. We're not in it for 90%. Even if it was 90%, it's not. Even if it was 90%, we, we might talk about that. But we didn't want to get rid of the Budget Control Board just to check off the box and say we've gotten rid of the Budget Control Board. We want to get rid of the Budget, rid of the budget Control Board because we want separation of powers, because we want accountability, because we want transparency. And if what we are given as a substitute for the Budget Control Board doesn't give us those things, and it doesn't, then it's not acceptable. It's not 90%. It's nowhere even close to that. Thank you. My name is Corey Norris and I am the founder of the Lexington Tea Party and there's not much more I can say that these guys haven't already said. I agree with everything they've said to this point. One thing I will add is I have read the South Carolina State Constitution. Article 1, Section 8 of the South Carolina Constitution clearly calls for a separation of powers. To any legislator, legislator in this building, I would challenge them to tell me how the Budget Control Board itself or the Department of Administration that the Senate is, supposed, is, is proposing is in compliance with Article 1, Section 8 of the South Carolina Constitution. It bars any judi judicial, executive, or legislative branch from taking on powers that are assumed by, by the other branches. It's clear. It doesn't matter what the Supreme Court of South Carolina has said. The Supreme Court is appointed by the legislature and is beholden to the legislature, so they have a tendency to rubber stamp what the legislature does. The people can read, and the people know what's going on. The bottom line is, is they're trying to give the illusion of reform while maintaining plausible deniability so that whenever something goes wrong and we go to them demanding answers, they can say, well, it was that guy. And we're sick and tired of it. It's time for politicians to be held accountable, and it's time for them to do what the people demand. Let's just get a round up who we have here and what group they were. So, Larry, how's the yard and what group you represent? My name is Larry Barnett, and I represent GPS Conservatives for Action, looks like the committee in uh, District 5 in South Carolina. Great. Who else? Who else? 
I'm Larry Rizbo. I represent the Kershaw County Patriots. Randy? I'm Randy Simpson, and I represent the Senate of Who else do you have here representing the group? Columbia Tea Party. Columbia Tea Party. Great. Concerned citizen of the upstate, Green Adams. Lexington 912. Lexington 912. Paula Kinziger, GPS from York County. Do you miss anybody? So you can see we have a very wide range of, uh, of uh, groups from a pretty broad geography. And there were a lot of other groups who wanted to be here, but because it was a uh, last minute press conference and a work day, they couldn't be here. We appreciate your time. Anybody else want to say something? Okay, thank you. Any questions? You mentioned reshuffling of the deck chairs. Which divisions or duties do you want just to remain entirely? Um, you know, that's a good question. Eliminate entirely. Uh, any, basically, any shared power, any shared authority has got to be eliminated entirely. Legislative uh, authority needs to be with the, the legislature. Part or the, responsibility? The, the shared part needs to be eliminated. Executive functions need to be with the executive branch. Judicial functions need to be with the judicial branch, which we didn't mention the legislative oversight. But the way that whole section is worded, is uh, it sounds like the judicial branch of government to me, and uh, that's not the appropriate role of the legislature. One, one quick thing that I didn't mention, nobody has so far. Prior to this bill making its way from the House into the Senate and back out of the Senate, our legislature did not have the authority to call a private citizen before a legislative uh, uh, committee for sworn depositions. This is a whole brand new power that our legislature is giving itself over private citizens. There's been no explanation as to why they feel now that they need the authority that they've never had before to hold people like us and you <clears throat> and force you to be in front of a legislative committee under, for a sworn deposition. It's a very intimidating process. That's got to go. That is not good government. That's not the government being responsible to the people. That's the people being forced to be responsible to the government. What are some of the other shared responsibilities that are in the bill? Um, bonding authority should be something. If, if the state is going to be put into debt, uh, that's an appropriation of money. That should reside solely with the legislature. They should not give themselves an out, which they have. You know, they, the full legislature, right, thank you. Um, you know, the way it's currently written, they're required to come in and approve bonding authority unless they don't. And then if they don't, then it goes back to um, an appointed official to do that. And that's gotta go. Our legislature should be responsible for putting our state into debt, and they should be accountable back to the people. The only change they made in this bill is they're moving it from a budget control board to another full-line member board. That looks a people. lot like the budget control board. They just don't call it budget control board. They call it joint bond review committee or something like that. The, the, the thing to note is that legis the legislative oversight aspect that they're touting um, is all wrong. The legislative oversight comes through appropriation. Either you appropriate money or you don't. The executive executes on, on the money that's been appropriated. There's no need for further, which is what this bill does, it maintains further oversight in the power of the legislature. It's redundant. The, the legislative branch has power for appropriations, and you appropriate money or you don't. So you don't want them to review agencies at all? Well, there is a review process, and it's the Legislative Audit Council. And, and I can understand if that Audit Council, their responsibilities and duties need to be broadened so that they're now uh, auditing every government agency on a regular rotating basis but it needs to be independently done from the legislature. The problem with giving the legislature and the standing committee's authority to review on a schedule that they pick um, which governing authority or which um, agencies, then they can choose to audit agencies which say the governor has control over and then choose not to audit agencies which they appoint through their uh, legislative appointments and have control over. So say the SCRA, wow, it might never get audited while um, you know, an agency that the governor has authority over does. It needs to be independently done on a regular rotating schedule that the legislative leadership has no influence over when and how that's done. So the Legislative Audit Council can manage that through 
the way it's already set up. Any fears of the legislative law council that you're talking about lawmakers are picking those folks? Yeah, what's that? It's well, and they, they do, and but they're done, it's much more independent. If you talk to people today, the Legislative Audit Council is a pretty independent um, institution, the way that it's set up. And at least we don't have the standing committees and the legislators themselves, which they say they don't have time to do what it is they do already. So now we're going to load them down with the authority and the, the requirement to go and audit the rest of the executive branch in addition to what they're already doing. To this young lady about the, the bonding authority. What makes this so extremely important to the citizens is the fact, for example, if, if you've got a committee of, of three or five legislators that have the authority to put the state into debt, each one of those people can only be held accountable by the voters of their district, which means there's roughly 45 counties that have no voting whether or not they approve of the way that member of a board is putting us into debt. And a lot of people in the state, because the, those three or five people on that board will not live in any other districts, a lot of the people will have no accountability uh, to be able to hold their pe uh, these people accountable. So they can put us into debt. We may disagree with it, but I can't vote for that person uh, to, to get him out of office. That's why it's so imperative that the people who put us into debt Every citizen of South Carolina should have a right to voice their approval or disapproval at the ballot box for the job that they do. But they will be voting on a lump sum of money, correct? That, that is a vote that you can hold them accountable. They vote on the total amount, but, the, but, but then it goes to this commission to decide where the bond money actually goes, and they can send it to their district. My representative has no say so about it. I have no say so about it. There again, it's it's. It's, it's about we have a constant, what we have now is concentrated power in the hands of a few. That's not good principles of government. We want that dispersed to, to the, the full body of the House and Senate for legislative issues. Once that becomes complete, pass it over to administration. And, and you know, this is not about, folks, this is not about we want to put more power in the governor's office. Because we realize whether we like the governor we have now or whether we don't, the power just needs to be uh, diffused. We need to have separation of power. It's not about personalities. It's not about we want Nikki Haley to have more power. We want a separation of power. So they can be held accountable. And then the people have the power. They can decide. And then the people have the power. Do you want this person or not? They try to make this so complex. Believe me, I can show you my phone. How many times legislators and others have called me just this week alone? They, they want to make it so complicated, and we keep saying the same thing. Separation of power. What's hard to understand about that? It's either a legislative function or it's an executive function. What's so hard about that? Accountability, transparency. We want to be able to know what our government is doing. And we want to be able to hold those accountable that are doing it. We Why is that, that so? Don't you agree? Don't, don't you all want that? You should. We feel like, I'm going to say, I feel like we have went out to dinner. We've paid for a steak and lobster dinner. They've given us a warm cheeseburger and said, be thankful we heated it up. We want the government that we deserve and that we pay for end of story, and we will no longer allow them to tell us when the job is complete. We would really like a government that follows its own constitution. Yes. That would be a good step in the right direction. Any other questions? I know we're holding up tours that are going on, and I appreciate your willingness to do that for us. Thank you all. Thank you.